The history of aviation is a tale of human ambition, technological advancements, and the desire to bridge far-flung corners of our world. While many of us are familiar with the story of the Wright brothers and their groundbreaking flight in 1903, a lesser known yet equally impactful narrative is the birth and rise of cargo aviation. In this video, we will explore the history of cargo transportation, from the early days of paper mail delivery to the present, where cargo planes can even carry other planes inside. As always, if you enjoy our content here at Big Metal Birds, please leave a like on this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know in the comments what video you would like to see next. Comments are highly valued by the YouTube algorithm, so they are truly important for a small channel like ours to gain traction. If you already did that, please fasten your seatbelts, make sure tray tables are folded, and let's go. Going back to the early days of aviation, airmail was a crucial necessity. It offered faster delivery compared to trains or ships, and in many cases, it was the only option available. However, as our needs evolved with the changing world, the demand for specialized aircraft emerged, especially for transporting larger goods, machinery, and even livestock. Nevertheless, we cannot overlook the era when it all began. The 1920s and 1930s are often dubbed the Golden Age of Aviation, and rightfully so. This era was marked by rapid advancements in aircraft technology and the blossoming of airmail services. Central to the development of airmail in the United States was the U.S. Airmail Act of 1925, colloquially known as the Kelly Act. This landmark legislation allowed the United States Post Office to enter contracts with private airlines for the primary purpose of transporting mail. The introduction of this act was transformative, establishing the groundwork for the nascent commercial aviation industry in the U.S. And while airmail didn't really require any significant modifications to the planes of that time, we must talk about the Boeing Model 40. Introduced in 1927 by Boeing Air Transport, a predecessor of United Airlines, it was designed specifically to transport mail. Capable of carrying up to 1,200 pounds of mail, this plane was a game changer. A later variant, the Model 40A, also had the capacity to carry passengers blending the worlds of mail and commercial aviation. Shortly after humanity recognized all the benefits of airmail, the race for larger cargo transportation began. Let's take a look at these giants, a few from each decade. While US was delivering mail at another continent, Germany was building something that simultaneously shocked and inspired all the aviators of that time. The Junkers G38 was a bold step forward forward in speed, comfort, but mostly in size. Its wings were so thick and spacious that passengers could comfortably walk inside them, a design choice that was revolutionary for its time. This wasn't just about aesthetics or novelty, though. The Junkers G-38 was practical in its ambitions. While many aircraft of the era grappled with the choice between accommodating passengers or cargo, the G-38 effortlessly embraced both roles. It married cargo capacity with passenger comfort, a testament to its ahead-of-its-time design. Underneath its wings, the aircraft housed four engines with a unique-to-its-time arrangement that placed two in tandem pairs. Closer to the fuselage, it had Junkers L55 V12 engines with four blade propellers, and then Junkers L8A six-cylinder engines with two blade propellers. This engineering allowed it to cruise at speeds of approximately 105 miles per hour. In an age of rapid innovation, the Junkers G38 stands out as an embodiment of what was possible when creativity met engineering excellence. As the golden age of aviation progressed, Britain introduced its own heavyweight in the cargo realm, the Bristol Type 170 freighter during the 1940s. This aircraft wasn't just about brute strength, it was a blend of functional design and adaptability. The Bristol Freighter's nose-loading capabilities were a game-changer, showcasing a design that intuitively understood the needs of the cargo industry. Interestingly, it wasn't just bulky cargo that it was ferrying. The aircraft was notably used to transport cars between the UK and continental Europe, bridging businesses and economies. Powered by twin radial engines, the freighter was capable of reaching speeds up to 225 miles per hour, covering a decent range of 500 miles. Its design and utility made it a staple in the cargo community during its time. 
The 1940s, a decade already filled with advancements in aviation, had yet another card up its sleeve. As we know, sadly, great wars fuel great inventions, and the Messerschmitt ME-323, Gigant, is a prime example of that. It soared into the skies as Germany's military response to logistical needs during World War II. The name Gigant wasn't just for show, it was a massive high-wing cargo glider. The sheer scale was soon paired with power, as it was eventually equipped with six engines. Designed primarily to transport heavy equipment and troops, the ME-323 wasn't just a display of might, but also of purpose. It seamlessly performed its duties, achieving a maximum speed of 135 miles per hour, and ensuring supplies and troops could be transported over a range of 620 miles. The aftermath of the war era brought the Douglas C-124 Globemaster II into the spotlight in the 1950s. This aircraft was not just another military transport, but rather an evolution of the C-74 Globemaster. The C-124's double bubble fuselage immediately caught the eye, providing ample cargo space. With its clamshell doors and the unique ability to kneel for easier cargo loading, it was clear that the C-124 was designed with the future in mind. Powered by four engines, it cruised confidently at speeds of 320 miles per hour, covering distances of up to 2,175 miles. In the transition from war to peace, the Globemaster II played a vital role, highlighting the importance of robust cargo aircraft in a rapidly changing world. The late 20th century witnessed a shift from standard cargo planes to veritable giants of the sky. Enter the Antonov An-225 Maria in the 1980s. Originally hailing from the Soviet Union, the Maria wasn't just another addition to the list, it was the heaviest aircraft ever built. Derived from the design of the Antonov An-124, this Titan had a special mission. Transporting the Buran Space Shuttle. Its sheer size was matched by an equally impressive power source, six turbofan engines that propelled it to speeds up to 500 miles per hour, spanning distances of 9,570 miles. On the other side of the world, the dawn of the new millennium introduced a game changer, the Boeing Dreamlifter. While the Boeing 747 was already an iconic aircraft in aviation, the Dreamlifter, also known as the Boeing 747 LCF, large cargo freighter, took things to the next level. Its primary purpose was to transport parts for the Boeing Dreamliner, and it featured one of the largest cargo holds of any existing aircraft. The unique swingtail design of the Dreamlifter further enhanced the loading and unloading of large cargo. Powered by four engines like his commercially orientated brother, the Dreamlifter confidently cruised at an impressive speed of 610 miles per hour, covering a range of 4,200 miles, and that's with full load. And finally, the latest, most spacious, and definitely most unusual design goes to Airbus's Beluga XL. Named after the Beluga whale, its bulbous structure might appear whimsical at first glance, but it is all business when it comes to cargo. Interestingly, the history of the beluga can be traced back to another plane named after a sea creature, the guppy. First, there was the pregnant guppy, then the super guppy, and only after that did it become a beluga. The beluga then evolved into the Beluga XL, with each iteration becoming larger and more efficient. While the aim of this bulbous shape was similar for all the planes in this family, it was conceptualized to address the supersized cargo needs particularly for transporting large airplane components across Airbus's production network. This whale of the skies is powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent 700 engines, allowing it to maintain a cruising speed of 457 miles per hour and cover a range of 2,532 miles. The Beluga XL, with its distinct appearance and purpose, reiterates the idea that in aviation, form often closely follows function. And here is our dive into the world of supercargo airplanes. Which one did you like the most? Or perhaps you would like to see a more detailed video about one of these. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching our video. And until next time.